Come and look at.
Hello, peeps. Got to get my little ear. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I can't see any of you. I don't have time to figure out why. <laughs> Oh God, and it's just vanished again. Um, where did my screen go? There it is. Um, but I'm recording and I believe that we are going. Um, I wish I could find out if anybody can actually see and hear me. And because I cannot see it on the screen, perhaps somebody could text me on my phone to let me know that this is working okay. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna be nervous that I'm just uh, talking to myself the entire time. Um, because for some reason I cannot see or hear any of you. Don't know why really, but there it is. Oh, I see. I'm just gonna allow you all to talk for a minute, just for the fun of it. Yay, good. Is anybody there? Good, you can see and hear me, that's great. Okay, yes. this is all very exciting. So now I'm gonna mute you all. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to do that. Maybe, in, maybe there's a way, a button somewhere. I'll look for it, mute. Um, hmm. I'll just do, go through it individually and do it. Okay, you're all getting okay. Goodbye, everybody. Mute. All right, you're all, you've all been silenced. Okay, I'm gonna start the class. That's my next plan. And I would like to see it. Hello, Hagit. Um, for some reason, I'm seeing your name on my screen and I need to see myself. <laughs> oh no, no, I can't see me. Soon I'll figure this out and then I'll start. Um, hmm. Can see and hear you. Oh dear, paid but cannot log in. I'm getting all these messages from people, but I just, I don't have anybody helping me today. My helper is down with the virus or something like that. So um, I got to figure it out myself. Um, for some reason I'm seeing a participant's name and I'm not seeing anything else on my screen. Kind of scary. Um, so I can't really start yet. Because if I can't see myself, I can't see what you're seeing. I wonder how to fix it. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Seems good. Okay, I think I got it to work. So let's go to full screen, maybe. All right, good. Let's start Qigong. All right, just gonna get this set up as a balanced view. Okay, I believe you can see me and you can hear me. I'm not really enjoying this light. Somebody told me that they couldn't see me very well last time. So I'm trying some different lighting options. That looks like Jesus just shone a light down on me. Try that. Well, I like that lighting. I'll try one other option. Maybe that'll work better. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's it, good. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna start the class.
Mm, I'm going to just change something for a sec. Yeah. Good. Class commences. Okay, let's do some Qigong. And we're going to have a little bit of a focus on Qigong for immunity. And I think in order to start off this class, we're going to start with some Juju Yangshan Qigong. And I, I'm not sure if I'm going to go through the whole Juju Yangshan set, but I think we'll start with some. So the Juju Yangshan Qigong system is for loosening up the tendons and ligaments and pulling energy in through the tendons and ligaments. Take some deep, full breaths. So you keep your legs straight and just circle through the hips. Keep the arms a little bit out in front, just kind of floating out in front of you. The first exercise that we're doing of the Juju Yangsheng system is a very wonderful Qigong exercise. And if you practice it every day for a few months, you'll get this experience of this kind of line of energy opening up just about as my hands are moving, it sort of opens up at the level of the hip joints themselves and the sacroiliac joints. In fact, you can take your hands like this, let's reverse the direction and just press them downwards as you do this, this is another way to do this, just to create this circling energy. And what happens after a while is the circling energy actually transfers down your legs, transfers all the way down through your legs to your feet. And you'll find that it's actually circling around your feet. It's a very interesting healing energy. You can just let the hands kind of have their own motion as you do this. Deep, full breaths. Periodically, you're going to change your direction as I just did. Now let's go to the second level of this, which is that the heel of the empty leg comes off the ground. The empty leg is the leg which is not bearing your weight. We're just going to spin through it. All right, good. I'm going to check my phone. I hate to do this, but I just want to make sure that nobody's sending me a message that the whole thing isn't working. Um, no, I guess, no, I think we're good. There's a bunch of people that can't log in and <clears throat> are very <clears throat> concerned about that, but what can I do? I got to do Chigo. All right, so that's the first exercise of Juju Yangsheng. Now we're going to go into a few other exercises from the Juju Yangsheng system. Why do we want to do Juju Yangsheng to start with? Because a lot of what we do in Qigong is about uh, building up qi. But in order to um, build up qi, often it's useful first to open the channels. And then when you build up the chi, there's a, there's a flow that can occur because you've opened the channels. So now this is another little exercise here, going down, swinging around, coming up. So go down without turning forwards and then swing the arms forward, come all the way up 
and go all the way down. So the hand is gonna be coming up when it comes to the foot, then going down as if it's pressing down towards the foot. And then you swing all the way around and the arms are gonna form an S shape between the upper arm and the lower arm. That S shape is important to this Qigong. So breathe out down the outside of your leg. Breathe in up the inside of your leg. Breathe out as the arm sweeps down the outside of the leg. Breathe in as you come up, breathe up the inside of the leg. All right, good. I'll be back. That's better. Okay. Coming down. Keep the spine straight and elongate the spine. You want to you want to get the spine to elongate. Push the knees back, keep the legs straight, and just extend your spine to relax. And now turning. I'm going to mirror you. So now you're going to turn to your right. Extend the hand down to the towards the foot. And put your hands on your waist and turn. Turn your waist. Extend the hands down towards the foot and pulse through the position. Keep the legs straight. And then come out about 20, 30 degrees. And you're going to drop this elbow down. Pulsing to your face towards your foot. On the other side. Turn. To assist your turn, put your hands on your hips and just turn your hips some more. See how far around you can go. Try to keep your feet parallel to each other and then slide down your leg. See how far down you go and then pulsing, keeping your spine relatively straight. And now bring your torso out 30 degrees or so. So now your face is extending towards your foot. Drop this elbow down. Good. Now bring your weight just to the middle. Push your knees back. Slide your hands down towards your feet. And then pulse it. This is a little bit like bobbing for apples. When you, you know that game where you have apples floating in a barrel of water and you reach down and you try and pick one up with your mouth. Your face should be parallel to the ground. Good. Now in this position, start to rotate through your hips, through your sacroiliac joints. I hope you can all make sense of what I'm doing. I can't really see myself on the screen and I don't know how much this translates. So put your hands on your butt and as you make these circles, you're gonna notice one side goes up and the other side goes down and that's what you're looking for. That's keeping your legs totally straight. All right, good. I keep wanting to sit up and watch what you're all doing. But that ain't gonna happen. Okay, moving on. Dropping down again. Push the knees back, straight legs. Let the hands come forward and then come up on your fingertips and extend out over your fingertips. Mm. 
Deep, relaxed breathing. Back. Now we're going to come down and up. And if you're on your fingertips, that's good. If you can't handle it, then just put your hands flat. All right, good. And come all the way back. Bring your hands back to close to the line of your feet. And just lift up at your knuckles so that your fingers are flat on the ground. And then let's do some circling. Going around the other way. Okay, put the hands down. Circling through the wrist joints, keeping the hands flat. And then circle the neck. Or the other way. All right, good. So from here, we're just gonna go straight over into Pubu. So let yourself go down a little bit gradually. Your hand can land on your foot. You can slide down the other leg. As far as you go, it's fine. Lift up your torso, turn your hips in the direction of the extended leg and pulse through it. On the other side, using my little ear things. There we go. All right, then let's go to the other side. Put the hands flat on the ground. Put one hand behind you, flat on the ground. Lift up your torso and just bounce through that a little bit. Other side. Hands flat on the ground. Lifting up, bouncing. Let's come up into Gongbu. So we go through these exercises, these Jushu, Juju Yangchang exercises, a little bit fast. The idea is to really get all the tendons and ligaments energized and opened. So keep the back legs straight. Turn the hips in the direction you're facing and push forward with the front leg and back with the back leg simultaneously so that the stretch comes from the floor of the pelvis forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Then lift up the back foot, drop the back knee down. And again, stretching forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, and then sit straight back, legs straight down, knee drop down, turning a little bit. And the other side. And lift up, drop the knee down, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Sit straight back. All right, good. I just have to look at what my computer's doing, sending me some strange messages. 
Oh, how irritating. <laughs> I have to figure out how to stop it sending me weird messages whilst I'm doing this. Okay. Let's take some deep breaths. Going back to our original circling, but very soft, not too wide. We're gonna bring the hands up. We're gonna do a little bit of standing Qigong. So standing Qigong is a different Qigong system than Juju Yangsheng. And I'm gonna talk you through the points of alignment to focus on. Firstly, you wanna have your feet about shoulder width apart. So what does shoulder width apart mean? It means that your feet might come to like here and here, or maybe a little wider, just to the outside. It's anything in this range. So you could have like a narrow shoulder width, a wide shoulder width, or a sort of middle shoulder width. So just find out that spot that's right for you. But try to keep your feet parallel on that inside line. And then sit down. I'm gonna turn so that you see the side of me. You want to not push your pelvis forward, but just let your sacrum sink downwards and as your sacrum sinks downwards the lumbar spine is going to elongate down and the thighs you want to roll outwards so the thighs roll out the sacrum and the tailbone just stretches downwards drops down and we call this hitting the floor. You just go down until you really can't or won't go down anymore. And that's the floor. That's the, the, the base of your posture. And you just want to hang out there. What we're doing here is we're allowing the chi to start to, to push through the body with a kind of pressure, a kind of gravitational pressure. Now take deep, full breaths. As you breathe, expand your belly. Breathe in, expand your belly, expand it to the front, expand it also to the side and expand it into the back and expand it downwards so that as you breathe in, your belly expands like an expanding sphere. Presses down, fills into the pelvic cavity, presses forwards to the sides, to the back, presses upwards towards your solar plexus region. And all of that happens as you breathe in. And when you breathe out, just let the belly sink and relax, drop your chi down. Let your chi just drop down. No, drop your chin down and lift the back of your head up. I'm gonna to go to the side again. So rather than standing like this, you want to drop the chin down and elongate the back of the neck. When you do that, what you're gonna do is actually, you're going to elongate or stretch out the cervical vertebrae in your neck, just the same way that you elongated the lumbar vertebrae. And keep your hands at about the level of your chin and your mouth and your nose. Keep the tiger's mouth open. That's the space between your thumb and your index finger. And sink the shoulders. And then sink the shoulders some more. 
Let the shoulders drop down. Now, as you stand like this, you might experience sensations that you might have a label for. You might call a certain sensation uncomfortable. So just keep relaxing into the way it is. Keep relaxing your muscles and relaxing your mind. And relax the muscles in your body. Relax the anal sphincter. Relax your belly. All the little muscles in your belly. Relax your shoulders, just let them sink down. But even as you let your shoulders sink down, lift your hands up. You can actually sink your shoulders and raise your hands. Sink your shoulders. Now let your shoulder blades separate out away from the spine. Dropping your chin down. Keep your tongue towards the roof of your mouth. Lift the back of the head up, sink the sacrum down. Make sure that you're sitting down, rolling your thighs out. Now, as you breathe, bring your awareness into your lower dantian. Your lower dantian is the energy center just beneath your navel. So as you breathe, breathe into the lower dantian. See if you can feel the lines of energy that converge down into the lower dantian as you breathe into it. Sink your mind into the lower dantian. Being aware of the sensations moving into the lower part of your belly as you breathe in. And as you breathe out. Holding in your awareness the sensations, the physical sensations of the lower part of your belly as you breathe in at the top of your in-breath as you breathe out, at the bottom of your out-breath. Starting to pay very close attention to those sensations, you might notice that they change. The sensations on the in-breath are different than the sensations on the out-breath. And the sensations between the breaths are different again. Why do we want to build up this energy center? The lower dantian is called the little lungs and the little heart in Qigong theory. And this type of standing Qigong practice 
was used in China for strengthening the lungs and strengthening the heart and healing the lungs and the heart. You'll notice after you practice standing Qigong that you feel like a sort of shield-like quality of energy around your body. This is your Wei Qi, your defensive Qi. Your defensive Qi is generated in your belly. It's generated by the interaction of the breath coming down into the belly. It's a type of electrical um, charge to the energy fields around you. Just surrendering to the sensations. It's okay if they're uncomfortable. It's okay if it makes your body shake. It's really fine. Turning the hands. Now, bring your hands above the head. I think in this, at this angle, you cannot see my hands. I'll go lower. You don't have to go lower, but so you can see my hands. So you see how my hands are pointing up towards the sky. Sink the shoulders. Gather your energy into your belly. And now bringing the hands down. Breathing in, bringing your hands towards you, breathing out, the hands move away. Breathing in, your body comes up a little bit. Breathing out, your body sits down. Deep, full breaths. All right, good. So let's um, work with a uh, specific Qigong for the metal chi. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. This is a little bit of a more difficult Qigong to to recreate 
by watching somebody initially for some people it's not that it's that hard really but it's sometimes it kind of messes with the left right brain a little bit so a few pointers about this breathing in the weights in the middle now i'm going to mirror you my right hand is up and now breathing out transfer your weight onto the left leg the right hand is going to go out breathing in weight in the middle left hand coming up now transfer your weight onto the right leg as the left hand goes out so you're always going to transfer your weight onto the leg opposite your arm breathing in breathing out breathing in and breathing out deep full in breath And we're going to work with a three-stage in-breath. Expand the belly, expand the solar plexus, expand into the back of the chest, and then breathe out. Three-stage in-breath. Don't try to puff up the front of your chest at the top of the in-breath. Just expand into the back and sides of the chest. Belly, solar plexus, back of chest, transfer the weight, breathe out. Now, as you transfer the weight, you're going to also turn your hips and your waist, but not your hands. You'll notice that your hands are always going to stay on that midline and also your head. You're not really going to turn your head in the direction that your hips and your waist are turning. You're going to keep your head just looking straight ahead as well as your hands. Deep, full in breath, breathe out. Relaxing. Breathing in, white sparkling energy. Breathe out, relax. Sink the chi down through the leg that's bearing weight, the full leg. Transfer the weight. Turn the waist, turn the hips, sink the weight down. So breathing in, you're gonna come up a little bit. And breathing out, you're gonna sit down a little bit. The feet are gonna be parallel to each other. They're gonna be shoulder width apart, but a fairly narrow shoulder width, not a wide one. Gathering white sparkling energy from under the ground, bringing it up your spine, over your head, down the front of your body. I'm going to stand to the side so that you can get a little bit of a sense, perhaps also a bit more of how these arms are working. Breathing in, that inside arm is coming up and then breathing out. Gathering white sparkling energy from under the ground, bringing it up your spine, over your head, down the front midline of your body. And as the chi comes down, it also extends out through your hand. And as you extend the chi out through your hand, drop the elbow down. The elbow is rolled down. That means that the little tippy point of the elbow, the olecranon, is going to be facing down as you sink your weight down. Breathing out, sink the weight down, expand the belly, sink the chi down. What you're doing is you're taking all this energy up here and you're sinking it down through your foot back into the earth. And then from under the ground, the white sparkling energy from crystals, rocks, gems, minerals comes up through your body. A fluid white sparkling energy floods up through your body and then bring it down. Now 
Why do we want to gather fluid, white sparkling energy? This is connected to the, the metal organs of Chinese medicine that are so intimately connected to the strength of your immune process. Deep, full breaths. This Qigong is known as Pi Chuan. Pi is a heavy axe. So the, the Qi extends out through your hand. So the hand is like this. The Qi extends out through here, as if you're um, cutting through. If you ever wondered why all those Kung Fu and, and karate masters are always breaking things with the edge of their hand right there. It's not because the bones are particularly strong right there. They're not really. It's because you can actually concentrate and issue your chi from that region underneath your little finger. It's a zone of concentration and extension outwards of the chi. That's why when people have um, a born with an extra finger, it's called hexadactyly. It's this is where it comes out normally. Because there's a natural energy extension right there. Gathering chi. All right, good. Let's work with um, the very simple Qigong for the lungs, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, your weight's gonna come forward and up a little bit. And you're going to actually expand into your chest in the front here. And then as you breathe out, sit down, sit back, sink the chi down into your belly. We're always playing in Qigong and the internal energy arts, Tai Chi and Shimi and Bagua. We're always playing with this interrelationship between pulling the breath energy into the chest and then sinking it down into the kidneys and the belly. Now open the tiger's mouth. The tiger's mouth is the space between your thumb and your index finger. And this is where the acupuncture channels connected with the metal system of your body that goes through your sinus cavities, your bronchial tubes, your lungs, and then wraps around your belly as the large intestine. This is, the, this is where the acupuncture channels of those organs travel to, the thumb and the index finger. So you wanna keep the tiger's mouth open. Keeping the tiger's mouth open is a great way to strengthen the chi in general. One of my first uh, teachers, uh, Master Chu King Hong, would emphasize keeping the tiger's mouth open throughout the day. Just practicing opening it, expanding it, playing with it. Because the tiger's mouth is a representative of the lower dantian. So here's your hand, right? And the hand is a is a is a map of the whole the whole body, the whole system. And right right here is the energy, energy system connected to your vitality, to your core of your vitality. So when we, when we keep, that, keep that open right in here, it actually sends a message to the core of our lower dantian to stay strong. Let's stand in Wuji for a minute. So just sit down a little bit, just so you're comfortable, not too low and roll your elbows forward and open your hands. Relax. Mm. 
just notice, shut your eyes. And just notice your physicality, the experience of your body and the energy. It's kind of in your body, but also kind of around it. That energy field. Now we're going to work with a, a specific Qigong again for the lung and the large intestine acupuncture channels. And for the, the process of getting the breath qi into the body, breathing in, breathing out. Now this Qigong is available on my YouTube channel. If you find the eight brocades, Qigong sequence on my YouTube channel, I think this is probably, probably about the second one. So, things. The back arm is like this, right? And it's not like this, okay? Drop the shoulder, roll the arm, and extend the olecranon, the, the, this part of the elbow, straight down. And then fold the hand over so that all the fingers, kind of liking this camera for this close in stuff, all the fingers touch the thumb, okay? The other hand, the thumb is going to hold the ring finger and the little finger and the other two fingers are going to point. And again, that elbow is rolled down. So that the point of the elbow is pointing to the ground and your elbows are going to be over your knees. When we practice Qigong, we like to work with the uh, six harmonies. And the six harmonies are on a physical level, one sort of understanding of the six harmonies is that your, your wrists and ankles, your elbows and knees and your shoulders and hips are sort of matching and mirroring each other. So practically speaking, that means that your elbows will be suspended over your knees. Breathing in, deep in breath. Three stage in breath. Now, pivot so that you're sliding on the heel of your leading foot and the ball of your following foot. And you're gonna come into this bow stance and then coming back. Now you're in a wide stance, we call this a horse stance and you're sitting down. Three stage in breath. Belly expands, solar plexus expands, back of chest expands. And then off you go into the bow stance. And back to the horse stance. Deep breath. Now this is a chi channel opening qigong. So let's start to review the channels as we do this. As you breathe out, you're gonna breathe out from underneath your collarbone down through the thumb and index finger, and then open the hand. Breathe from outside the thumb and index finger all the way up to your sinus cavities and then sink the chi down into your belly. The sinus cavities form a circle right around, right around here, <laughs> underneath your eyes and around. If you went up, I got to show you close up. Right? Sinus cavities form a circle around here. So you've got sinus cavities here, sinus cavities in here, sinus cavities up here, sinus cavities going straight back in, right? So you imagine the sort of zone of a circle around that point right there. That's where you're gonna work with the chi. Breathing in. Chi is coming up the large intestine channel through the sinus cavities and then down, straight down through your chest, straight down into the belly. Energizing the lung and the large intestine. Now, three stage in breath. Chi is going down the lung channel through the thumb and index finger, 
up the large intestine channel from the thumb and index finger running across your body to the sinus cavities, down through the lungs into the belly. Easy. Three stage in breath, white sparkling energy. Send it through the thumb and through the index finger and out beyond the fingers. Now breathing from beyond the fingers, all the way up to the sinus cavities and then all the way down to your belly. And your thumbs are pointing in to kind of draw the chi down. Deep, full breath, stretching between the two hands. All right, good. So let's um, sit down for a few minutes and we'll do a little seated Qigong. Sit on the edge of the chair. Take deep, full breaths. Belly, solar plexus, back of chest, and then let everything sink down and relax. Part of the practicing of Qigong is that you're gonna spend an hour and a half where each breath is deep. And that alone is transformative. Now, I talked about the sinus cavities, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them. The sinus cavities are germane to the subject of coronavirus. Uh, we know that there are, you know, five or six coronaviruses that are known about. And I think two or three of them are known viruses causing sinus type colds. And, um, it's been observed in China that the coronavirus, when it infects people, it starts off by colonizing their sinus cavities in their throat. That's exactly what we would expect it to do because that's what most cold and flu viruses do first. That's kind of their, their points of entry. And so we're gonna do a little bit of a focus on, on energizing and working with the the sinus cavities and what i would suggest in terms of um, protecting yourself and strengthening your immunity right now is really make sure that your sinus cavities are clear um, we are entering a time of uh, typical time in this area of allergies uh, in northern california and also we're in a time where everybody's sitting at home where there's a tendency to eat comfort foods and binge watch TV. Um, so what that typically does when people eat more dairy, more wheat, more sugar, is it creates mucus congestion in the throat and the sinus cavities, which is exactly what coronavirus is begging you to do. <laughs> because that's, that's what it will thrive in. That's what it will um, colonize and, and feel good in. So 
I recommend that you make sure that your diet is very low in mucus producing foods, which for the majority of people are going to be um, excess carbohydrates, especially wheat, dairy, and sugar. And um, then do something to clear out your sinuses. There's many good things you can do. If you're used to using a neti pot, feel free to use one. If you're coming down with a cold or with the coronavirus, perhaps don't use a neti pot if you're not very used to it because it could actually increase the inflammation. Um, but if, if you're doing fine, I recommend you start using a neti pot or start doing a steam inhalation. It's great. You take a bowl, you fill it with boiling water, you put some olive oregano, tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil, red thyme oil, they're all good. Um, on, on, the, on the boiling water, just drop some on, put a towel over your head and over the bowl and inhale. Do that as much as you can handle it. You'll need to take your breaths of fresh air in half a minute or so, but try to get those uh, aerosolizing essential oils up into your sinus cavities. Super good for them. And um, if, you, if you have hape, if you know what hape is, it's a South American tradition, a kind of a snuff made by Amazonian tribes, also extremely effective at keeping the sinuses clear. Um, you can buy a xylitol nasal spray. Very effective. You see, what happens in most people's sinus cavities um, is that they have, um, they have fungal infections in them that are chronic, that are absolutely continuously ongoing. Uh, at least one American in seven has a chronic fungal infection in their sinus cavities. And when you're seeing people moving into sort of like a rapid deterioration with the coronavirus, probably what's going on is you actually have commensal infections. There's, there's the coronavirus and then there's a few others in there at the same time, which may have been in there for a long time that are sort of assisting in that rapid um, takeover of the body. So we want to get that stuff out of the sinus cavities. Xylitol nasal spray um, is something that the funguses in the sinus cavities, they love to eat it. It's a type of wood sugar. It's very sweet. And they eat it and they die. And your body does not metabolize it at all. It just is, doesn't have a negative effect on your body, but it kills the bacteria and the funguses. So that's a very inexpensive thing you can buy too. Okay, enough of all that. So let's do a little qigong for the sinus cavities. Let's do this one seated. You can also do it standing, but hey. So breathing in. You're gonna gather the qi into your maxillary sinuses. So your maxillary sinuses are sitting right here underneath your eyes. So breathing in. Just imagine sparkling energy, crystalline sparkling energy coming into the maxillary sinuses and then going out. I think I've got to do the standing. So that means you have to as well. Sorry, this doesn't feel right to just seat it. So breathing in, draw the chi into the maxillary sinuses. And then breathing out, sending the chi out away from the maxillary sinuses. Breathing in, drawing the chi into that region and then breathing out out of it. Now, as you draw the chi into the maxillary sinuses, tune into the spiritual laws for the, the manifestation of your, the power of your chi. Okay, I got to stop and explain something. Sorry, <laughs> got to do this. It's a lecture, I apologize. Um, you've got four types of sinus cavity, maxillary sinuses, frontal sinuses, ethmoid sinuses, and then right in the back, a singular sphenoid sinus. The sinus cavities correspond fundamentally to um, the laws of manifesting in the four realms of existence. And the four realms of existence are the physical realm, the chi realm, the shen mental astral realm, and the spiritual realm, the ling realm. So the, the sinus cavities, vibrates to that, and I'll, and I'll break that down as we go through it. So, as you pull the chi into the maxillary sinuses, the ones right underneath your eyes, attune yourself to the laws of manifesting your chi. There's a, there's a, a wisdom and a, a knowing, an inner knowing of how to manifest strong chi. 
and you can access that as you pull chi into and then pull chi out through your maxillary sinuses. White sparkling energy. All right, good. Now we're gonna work with the, the uh, frontal sinuses, which are right above your eyes, right here. Okay, breathing in. Pulling chi into the frontal sinuses and then breathing out. Breathing in, gathering. Pulling chi into those frontal sinuses and then breathe out. Now, as you pull chi into these sinuses, you're going to be drawing to you the laws of manifesting in the mental realm, the astral realm. Pulling in a light energy into your frontal sinuses. Good. Now we're going to work with the, the ethmoid sinuses. So the ethmoid sinuses are right in here, going inwards. So the ethmoid sinuses, you're going to do this kind of position. You're going to, hands are going to come in and then down and away. I'll demonstrate to the side. Chi coming into the ethmoid sinuses and breathing out down and away. So the ethmoid sinuses have to do with the laws of manifesting in the spiritual realm. Good. Now we're going to work with the sphenoid sinus. So the sphenoid sinus is this singular sinus cavity that sits sort of back in an inch or two um, right underneath the, the bone cella testica that supports your pituitary gland. So the sphenoid sinus is responsible for what's called what you might call ecstatic equilibrium. And so this is an understanding that in everyday life, we're in the working with mundane equilibrium, which is the sort of the equilibrium of our body, our emotions, our mind, with the everyday consciousness that we're working with. In ecstatic equilibrium, 
um, we are in a balanced place where we are connected to the awareness of all that is, of the cosmic consciousness. Breathe in, hold the breath in, and then breathe out. Breathe in, hold the breath in, and then breathe out, bring the chi down. Breathe in, hold the breath in, And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. All right, good. You'll notice that's all very heady. That's where the sinus cavities are. So now let's work with um, kind of opened up the cavities of breathing in the head. The sinus cavities are interesting because um, actually, you know, we don't really know technically from a sort of Western medical point of view exactly what they're there for. Some people theorize they're there to amplify sound vibration. And other people theorize that they're there to sort of elevate the head by creating air cavities because our brains are so big and heavy that it sort of helps to sort of counterbalance that way. Um, that's interesting. Um, so now we're gonna work some more with the chest. And I'm going to access, <laughs> I could Qigong for that um, from my, my Qigong database. Let me just think what would, be, what would be good for that. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Breathing in. Breathing out. So this is drawing a bow. This hand is going to be like this. This hand is going to be like this. Literally like you're drawing a bow. Now, as you do this, we're going to create movement. Counter talk, counter talk movement. That means your arm is going to go in the one direction and your, your other hand and your waist, your belly is going to go in the opposite direction. What we're wanting to do here is get a kind of a stretch going through the lungs.
Let's work with another um, lung qigong. Breathing in. And breathing out. So this is a qigong for really expanding the sphere of your breath. And this is an idea, and you'll see this sort of played out in the, in the Chinese internal energy martial arts and you know, Tai Chi and Bagua and so on, um, where as your breath fills your qi body, it forms these kind of spheres around you. In the, in the Chinese medical system, we, we call this the Dai Mai or the, the belt channel as a sphere around the belly. But actually there are, you know, there are multiple kind of spherical structures around you. So here we go. Breathing in and up and out. Breathing in. Now we want to explore expanded breath and then breathe out and relax. Breathing in. And then expanded breath coming all the way out through your fingers. Breathe in. And more expansion through the chest. Now, normally when we practice Qigong, I'm telling you not to sort of puff out the front of your chest, but this Qigong, you're gonna open up every part of your lungs. Just pause here. You're gonna open up the bottom of your lungs the side of your lungs, the back of your lungs, which is often closed when people push into the front. So open up the back and the front and the throat. Breathing in and then open and then breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing in some more and then relax. Breathing in, breathing in more. Relax, enjoy, expand. I think I love this Qigong. All right, good. So we worked with really opening up the breathing cavities in the head. We worked with really opening up the chest. Now we're gonna work with um, opening up the um, breath process in the belly some more. So we'll work with this Qigong. Breathing in, expand the belly and breathe out, expand and sink the belly. So I'm gonna to stand to the side so that you can get a sense of this. Breathing in, you're gonna bring your weight forward and bring your elbows back. And then breathing out, you're gonna push back into your Ming Men. Your Ming Men is that point on your spine opposite your navel. So breathing in and breathing out. Pull the elbows back and then relax the shoulders. Expand the belly. So we're opening the breathing capacity a little bit more, a little bit more, and then connect it into your kidneys. So as your weight comes forward and your elbows come back, you're gonna arch your lower back inwards a little bit. And then as you breathe out, relax your belly. You're just gonna push your weight back and that's gonna supercharge your kidneys. 
with the breath energy from your belly. All right, good. Let's um, sit down again and do some more meditation. Keep taking deep, full breaths. Even if you're feeling a little bit like, wow, I've done a lot of deep breathing, just keep going. And let's request the power of the breath. The thing about the breath is that the breath is actually like a gift given to you in your physical incarnation. That carries with it a sort of link between spirit and body. So the breath carries with it a link to your chi body, to your shen body, to your ancestor body. In that sense, the breath is a pathway to another aspect of your, of your, of your whole self. And uh, when you start practicing Qigong or you start practicing yoga with a lot of breathing or any of the, you know, Wim Hof breathing techniques, any of these, um, these breathing exercises, you're, you're, you're actually accessing um, wisdom pathways from very, very ancient traditions. And when you do that, you activate something inside you uh, which is, I think, operating at the level of your genetics. And I don't think it matters what your racial background is. I think it's in the genetics of all of humanity. Because our ancestors, anciently, um, were actually um, operating um, many, I think, phases of our history at a much higher level of consciousness than we currently are. And so, many of your personal ancestors mastered the breath. And so there are, there are beings that will, that will assist you when you work with breathing. So we're gonna do some deep breathing right now. And let's just have an, uh, an openness um, a receptivity and a, a requesting 
that, that we can be connected to these beings of the various um, breath chi lineages that have existed, I suspect, you know, in all, in all ancient cultures. And so as we breathe, deep full breaths, just let it be however it is for you. You don't need to guide the chi to go somewhere or not go somewhere. Just keep taking deep, full breaths. Requesting the presence of that healing force that can come through the breath, within the breath. that can move through your body. And there's a lot that this breath force, once you establish it in this deep, full way, and once you open yourself to receiving the full channel of the breath, coming through you, there's a lot that this breath force can shift and heal inside of you. Now, Wim Hof is a beautiful example of somebody who's worked a lot with the breath force and mastered it. And so it's interesting to examine what he can do because what he can do, we can do. He's, he's not like some sort of like, you know, angel or fairy, he's a <laughs> human being. and. So in one of the experiments um, that they did on him, they injected him with typhoid toxins, which have a very known, keep breathing deeply and fully whilst I talk, by the way, which have a very known pathway of activity in the body that the body get, you know, gets sweating and fever and it takes you know, 10 or 11 hours and then gradually the body eliminates these toxins. And Wim Hof demonstrated that he could eliminate these toxins out of his system in about 40 minutes using his deep, full breathing techniques. And you can too. You can take a silly little virus and you can just eviscerate it out of your system. And you can also request that that force of healing within the power of the breath that's innate within you comes through you as you discipline yourself to practice these Qigong exercises and move through your system and just clear out anything that exists within you that needs to be cleared out. So deep, full breathing. Now start to bring your hands out to the side. Now we're going to generate this deep full breathing. In space around us. And you don't have to move your hands the way I'm moving them, but I want you to move your hands in the space around you. With your breath. Start to supercharge the energy fields around you with this descending force that can come down through you with the breath. It's like standing in snowfall. It's like standing in a spray of sparkling liquid drops. It's like moving in a field of millions of sparkling particles that are empowered by and interwoven into your breath. 
And now you start to move all of that through your physical form and through your chi body, the surface layer of your chi body, the Wei Qi. Wei Qi is known in Chinese medical thinking as fierce, ferocious energy. It moves with a kind of grace and economy of movement, efficiency of movement. It's the energy force that is cultivated in many of the, the energy markets. Martial arts, Tai Chi, Shingi, Bagua, Sistema, Aikido, any really good martial arts. You, you watch the really top mixed martial arts practitioners. You know, um, Conor McGregor, Israel, Adesanya. They're moving with Chi. They're, mas they're masters of Chi in many ways. So you draw this chi into you and interfuse it into your chi body. In the Vedic thinking, this type of rapid movement of the chi force is quite connected to the, the monkey god Hanuman. Many of the martial arts in India work with Hanuman's energy. And you have access to this. You just do this deep breathing, you request, you pray for this force to come through you, through your chi body, and then it also penetrates through your physical body. As it penetrates through your physical body, and we're just gonna go into a little bit of standing again. As it penetrates into your physical body, Just let it move through all parts of you. Now, broadly speaking, we're going to do pulling down the heavens, which means the hands are going to descend around the front of your body. And then at some point, you're going to bring the hands down the sides of your body. Bringing down this penetrating Wei Chi field, requesting the true force of the breath to quickly respond to you, to come to you from the spiritual realms, to enter into your breath process so that you become aware of, so that you feel these fields of energy around you and start to move them through the back of your body. And now, your whole body just like one water drop, filling, 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 all the way down under the ground. And again, your whole body like one water drop, filling, 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 filling all the way down underneath you. And again, your whole body is like a water drop, extending this energy field also in front of you, to the sides of you simultaneously, behind you, front of you, to the side of you, filling, filling, filling. And again, the water drop. All right, good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unmute, um, I think I'm gonna unmute everybody just so we can have a quick check-in. See if I can do this. <laughs> I maybe can do this and maybe I can't, who knows. Um, let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna unmute, unmute people. Well, I guess, Hagit, you're already unmuted. 
<laughs> Next time I'm meeting you, you'll be like, this might be on the phone, you might be able to talk. But you are, yeah, it's not letting me unmute you. Hello. Uh, it's letting me unmute everybody else. Hello, people. Yes. What? I'm allowed to talk. Okay. Okay, huh. let's keep going down. I'm just staring at this thing. Oops. Okay, I think I've attempted to unmute um, everybody. And I just want to check in with people. How are you all doing? Well, okay. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any, um, I'm going to see if I can see you all. I don't know how to do that because I'm clueless. Oh, then you maybe are, maybe some of you are. Does anybody have any questions or comments? But questions might be good, um, especially around what's happening. But we might just have a five or 10 minute discussion about um, the um, <laughs> pandemic perfection of this moment. Okay. <laughs> I think somebody is speaking and I can't hear you. Yeah, can't hear what you're saying. I wish I could actually. I don't you hear me. Kind of. Just wanted to thank you. It was it was wonderful. I just enjoyed every moment of it. Good. Who am I speaking to? Hagit. Oh, hi, Hagit. I'm glad you're on. Good. Good, good, good. Um, hey, Hagit, um, and any of you who are listening, um, I don't know if you're getting my emails, um, but I have also posted my emails on Facebook. And I think that Facebook has blocked me because Facebook now is blocking people who talk about alternative treatments for coronavirus. They've got like some machine, automatic machine algorithms that are actually blocking those posts from being read by many people. So my posts are only being read by 10 people, um, which is sad because <laughs> I've been posting some, I think, pretty good information and to talk some things about um, herbs um, and supplements to treat coronavirus and to prevent coronavirus. And I've been pretty deeply immersed in the research, um, looking at the, you know, what the naturopathic community is doing, the holistic MDs are doing, especially looking at what Chinese um, herbal doctors have been doing. So just check, check out the page. And if you could share it, I would appreciate it because um, there ain't nobody seeing that. <laughs> Oh. I'll check it, not in the Facebook, but I think um, you might uh, wrote to me an email. I just signed yep. last week there was. Too. Yeah. Great. I, you know, the thing about a MailChimp newsletter is that it only gets about a 20% opening rate. So, <laughs> you know, I feel a little bit of a sense of like wanting to get information out because honestly, I think that with the right supplements and the right herbs and the right lifestyle stuff. This is really, you know, it doesn't have to be that big a deal for the vast majority of us. And I, and I just kind of want to emphasize that. And, I agree, and, uh, I you know, agreed, uh, Adam. I totally, I totally uh, feel that. Yeah, I, I, I'm interested also in the silver lining of all this, which is definitely interesting. Um, because um, I'm trying to unmute you, Kelly. But it's not right in there. Um, silver lining, you know, one of the silver linings is an really interesting phenomenon that we're, we're all presented with that we're one species dealing with a global problem. And that's actually in, in human history, although we have had global problems we had to deal with, you know, I'm, you know meteorites and things like that, it's, it's, it, it feels very timely to me. That here we have a, a thing that's happening, and we also have the technology to enable us to all sort of see what we're all doing to some extent and be in one relationship as a species with something. I think that's a real value. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. It's so interesting what's happening right now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's. As always, on this planet, it's pretty entertaining. Not always, but mostly. <laughs> uh, I enjoy your energy, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. Who am I speaking to? Geet again. Hi, Geet. 
So I will post, um, I'll post a link to this so that um, you know, watch it and practice it in the time too. Um, and then, yeah, if you get sick or you know someone who gets sick, I've got all the herbs that I've been using in China to treat every stage of the virus. So I can get people herbs in 24 hours or sooner, actually, um, if I think they need it. That's the deal. Adam, thank you so much for doing this. This is Yulia. Oh, hi, Yulia. You're very welcome. Yeah. You're and welcome. what's the best way of reaching you, you know, if we wanted to get the herbs or set up a Zoom consultation with you? Yeah, just, um, just text me. Um, okay. I'm I'm still seeing patients in the clinic Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, less, of course, much less. But I Thank still you. am seeing people with very careful hygienic precautions. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'm seeing people, and I'm also doing Zoom consultations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank All you. Right, Adam. Guys. Anybody else got anything they want to say? Thank you very much. It's Clara. <laughs> You're very welcome, Clara. Thank you. Stay healthy right. yourself. Thank you. So, so practice lots of Qigong, people. Please. Okay. Lots of Qigong practice daily. Yeah, do, you, do you have this recording to, to give us? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be able to put it out tomorrow. I'll put it out on Facebook and I'll email you guys the recording. Adam, maybe you can do it again in a few weeks, you know? Oh, I'm going to do it every week. Don't worry. Oh, perfect. I may not do the same thing every week. Yes. I'm going to get bored with talking about immunity and the lines. But um, it was a kind of a repeat of one I did last week, which you can also, you can also watch it. The, the, the link to that is on Facebook. Um, Great. Or in one of the emails I sent out too, actually. So, yeah, I'll, I'll keep doing this. And at some point, I might just morph over into regular cheating. But, yeah. We'll see. Is is the next class uh, Thursday night? Yeah, next class will be Thursday night. And Monday night I'll be doing um, I'll be doing a talk. I don't know what about. <laughs> I I mean maybe maybe coronavirus. Um, I'm not sure. I'll think about it. I'll what about what nutrition or something like that? You know. Say that again. Um, when you spoke about the supplements the other day, you yeah. also added some things about nutrition and. So yeah, that would be great too. Yeah, we could do more, and I'll probably do more of that. It'll probably be more, be more clinical on Monday, and then we'll do Qigong on Thursday. All right, gang, thanks for all being here. I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Does anybody have any one last question or comment? All right, Thank I think you. we're gonna end the meeting. Sorry for any technical with this. I'm still learning, as you can imagine. Zoom. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. End meeting.